So we're going to look at the best mods and upgrades for your Honda S2000. Now Honda have produced a fantastic car. It's won so many awards over the years. In fact, between 2000 and 2009, I counted 10 awards that the S2000 or the engines it used have won from prestigious motoring organizations. So you've certainly got a piece of motoring history if you've got an S2000. So we're going to look at the best mods and upgrades for this amazing car and just highlight some of the common pitfalls that people fall into, mistakes that you really need to avoid and focus on the best ways of getting more power and improving the handling and performance of this awesome car. So Honda wanted a special car to celebrate their anniversary and the engineers were pretty much given free reign. It was interesting, it wasn't driven by the marketing department which would require a car to look a certain way and appeal to a certain type of driver. But the engineers, real car enthusiasts at Honda, they were given a free reign to build the car they wanted and that really came through in the finished product. It was actually first shown in 1995. Although many people think of it as a 2000 model, it was actually first released in 1999. The AP1 version was the original S2000 at launch and it had the F20C engine which generated power figures of around 237 to 250 horsepower. In 2000 in Japan there was a very special version released, the Type V. The notable feature of this was its variable steering ratio which made parking easier so the conventional car would require 2.4 turns lock to lock but this got away with just 1.4 turns which really did make the car feel very special and very sporty. The AP02 came out in 2004 and received some suspension tweaks and upgrades just to improve cornering. It was mainly the geometry of the suspension that was altered. They certainly had a winning package so it really only requires some minor fettling just to fine tune it and hone it in there so it's probably one of the places you should look if you've got the original version just making the same changes that Honda saw fit to make when they brought out the AP02. The AP02 had the F20C engine but in North America there was actually an F22, a 2.2 litre engine. Power output was very very similar, horsepower output that is. The torque was slightly higher on the higher capacity engine which was interesting but it was something they did for the US market and there were some very special models that were released over the years toward the end of its production run. In 2008, Japan had the Type S, the UK had a special GT version, and Europe had an Ultimate Edition, a GT Edition, or GT Edition 100. So, small favour to ask at this point, could you please just boot that like button for us, because that really helps us to get out there. Comment as well, and let us know what mods you've done to your S2000, or what you're planning, because I really love to see what people are doing to their projects. And it also helps the YouTube algorithm to pick our video out, because it's had lots of feedback and comments on. So, really appreciate your support there. So, there was only under 114,000 S2000s made and released throughout the world and interestingly more of these were sold in the US than other countries combined looking at the figures that I've been able to have access to. So the US market was certainly important and they did have the unique 2.2 litre S2000 engine. So how do we improve this car? Well first of all let's look at the handling and improving the performance of the car. So Honda saw fit to tweak the suspension when they revised the model so that's certainly something that we should all think about doing, particularly if we've got one of the earlier versions. Just altering the geometry, the camber and the toe settings of the, the suspension, particularly at the front, can really dramatically improve the cornering. Bear in mind that the rubber bushings that were used on the suspension mounts are probably getting on a bit now and are not as flexible and efficient as they used to be. So just upgrading those bushings to uprated ones or replacing them with a new set can really sharpen up what has become rather soggy handling in some models with higher mileages. Please avoid fitting large alloy wheels to your S2000. They do look nice but they add a lot of unsprung weight. They force you to use low profile tyres. Now technically in the dry on the track that will improve your cornering but for everyday driving on roads in wet conditions on rough road surfaces it's to the detriment of the handling. So most owners we spoke to say that they prefer the handling with the stock size of rims or maybe going just a little bit larger. But bear that in mind, 
alloy wheels do not necessarily improve the performance of the car but you may just be interested in the visuals in which case there is a fantastic range of aftermarket rims that you can use on your s2000 so improving the braking should also be quite high up in your priority list bear in mind that brakes can't really exceed the level of grip from the wheels and the tires so choosing a really aggressive expensive set of large brake discs is probably pointless exercise for most drivers in fact if you're using your your car on the road I would also steer you away from the race spec brake pads these only really operate at, at track temperatures so they need to be quite hot in order to bite on the road they don't get as hot so they don't break as effectively when they're cold they also make more dust and are more noisy generally speaking so race pads are good for the track they are pretty much a, a requirement if you take your S2000 on the track because a lot of road pads would just not survive those sort of track conditions but don't be tempted to fit race pads to your road car thinking it's going to improve your stopping ability because it really won't. So fitting larger brake discs and larger calipers allow the use of larger pads which increase the stopping efficiency of the car. As we've said already, larger is not always better. There are points that are optimal that you should really think about getting to. As far as the brake discs go, you've got a choice of vented discs, groove discs, there's various different designs that all dissipate the heat more effectively. So check out the articles on our site, we go into brake discs in a lot more detail than we can in this um, short video. So performance mods, getting more power out of the engine, so the engine is effectively an air pump, it pumps air in, it adds fuel to the air, it burns that and then it spits it out of the exhaust. So the more air you can get your Honda S2000 to burn the more power you will make. So we spoke at the very, very beginning about the VTEC mechanism and how wonderful it is. So the camshaft affects the opening and the closing of your intake valve and your exhaust valve. So the durations that they're open for will have a big bearing on how much air and fuel gets into the engine. VTEC effectively gives you two cam profiles. So it's like having a sportier cam in the car, but with fast road cams and sporty cams, you often have lumpy idle at low end RPMs. So cams generally tend to add the power at the top end. So what Honda have done, they've given you a, a general economical cam profile for the low end of the RPM. And then when you hit the VTEC zone, it switches to this more sporty profile. So you really have got the best of both worlds. So rather than going out and getting a sports cam, you can actually utilize, in most cases, what Honda have already got there. So if you can get the VTEC point to kick in further down the RPM range, you'll be on that sporty cam profile and you'll have the benefit of the extra power at those lower points in the RPM range. So you would typically do this by adjusting the ECU, but ECU remapping is not possible on so many of the older Honda engines. So what you need to do then is get either an aftermarket ECU, Apexy is uh, a brand that often crops up, or something like Hondata, which is a little module that supplements the ECU, and it allows you to make additional adjustments to it, like altering the VTEC cut-in zone. And if you can, within the ECU, adjust the timing of the engine, you can dramatically increase the power. So for most naturally aspirated engines, just altering the mapping will release about 10 to 15% more power. So thinking about the intake, these engines are high revving, they use a lot of air. You're burning more air and more fuel. So if you can get more air into the engine, that makes a significant difference and a significant benefit in your tuning project. Despite some claims out there, the stock S2000 intake is not particularly restrictive. Honda have done a really good job designing it. In fact, even with the very best induction kit designs, you will only see a peak power gain of around about two horsepower, which you will hardly notice. If you've done extensive tuning and the car is experiencing a restriction in the intake, then it's time to think about upgrading it and be very careful. There are very few good quality intakes out there that will improve the airflow on your S2000. So exhaust upgrades are quite important and probably more so than a lot of other engines because they're so high revving. So Honda have produced a, a nice engine, it's nicely set up from the factory, but as soon as you start adding power you need to think about removing the restrictions you created within the exhaust. Typical points of restriction will be the catalysts and the headers of the exhaust. So getting these optimized to improve the flow really does help with making more power. You want to get those exhaust gases away from the engine as quickly as possible. Now it's not just a matter of going bigger, you really do need to think about the 
velocity of the exhaust flow because you'll affect the scavenging effect as the engine empties the exhaust gases. If there's a restriction there, it's not fully emptying, so you don't get as much on the next intake stroke and there's hot gases already in there, so it'll have to retard off the timing and everything. So fitting fast road cats or sports catalysts can really free up the flow through the exhaust. Those um, factory cats can be quite restrictive, so the sports ones will generally flow as well as removing the cat altogether, but they'll have the benefit of keeping your car legal. Now I know in some areas we're not even allowed to swap out the catalyst, so do check your local regulations and make sure you don't fall foul of your local emissions regs. But looking at that restriction in the exhaust is probably one of the biggest significant points you can do if you were looking at upgrading the exhaust on the engine project. So in terms of engine mods, we normally recommend that for top performance you look at improving the flow into the engine through the head. Now Honda have done a really good job on the S2000. In fact, I've not really encountered anyone who has managed to make a notable improvement on the head of the S2000 without resorting to some kind of spiral flow to, um, to improve the vaporization of fuel within the combustion chamber. But it's a testament to Honda. They've done an amazing job with the engineering, so it gives you a good base to work from. So generally speaking, you want to get more fuel and more air into the engine. So adding forced induction is an obvious way of getting more air into the engine. So adding turbo kits, there's a certainly a lot of work involved, but some people have sat down. You can buy kits now that are suitable for the S2000 that pretty much just bolt on. A lot of people go with supercharger kits because these are easier to map. Turbo boost is rather progressive, so the higher the RPMs go, the more boost you are getting. Whereas a supercharger is relatively linear, so you get a set amount of boost at different RPM points, so it can be a little bit easier to set up. If you were really adding serious amounts of boost, you've probably got to think about addressing the mechanical parts of the engine, maybe even reducing the compression ratio to avoid the risk of detonation and knock. Although if you've got a decent aftermarket ECU controlling everything, it's surprising how far you can go now with forced induction before you start having problems. So another mod that people often do to their cars is remapping. Now with most Honda engines, it's not that easy. You can't just plug a computer into the ECU and remap it very easily. There's a few specialist companies out there with various solutions. Um, we would recommend Hondata, which is a little module that plugs in. So that can allow you to do things like get the VTEC point to kick in a little bit earlier, effectively giving you a fast road cam at further down in the RPM range. There's the Apexy range of aftermarket ECUs, which work very well. And there is actually quite a range of aftermarket ECUs that you can plug in, which give you more control over the engine. So if you were supercharging or you want the more extreme levels of power gains from the S2000 engine, they can certainly help you to get there and to achieve that. One slightly weak area with the S2000 is the valve springs and the valve seats and the valves themselves. So watch out for this problem if you're tuning it. Bear in mind that if you're using higher RPMs and you're forcing more power out of the engine, everything is working harder. So it would certainly make sense to upgrade those components, which have been known to fail when they're put under a lot of stress. But generally speaking, the S2000 is fantastically reliable, a great solid car. And you can't really go wrong if you've got an S2000 project. So I hope this video has been useful to you. If you're a, a real petrol head or a gear head, please subscribe. We've got lots of in-depth videos coming up on different car mods that you can apply to your S2000 just to get more power and performance out of it. And really to help you enjoy your car more and avoid a lot of the common pitfalls that people make. So please subscribe if you haven't done so. Please drop us a like and I'll see you in the next video. Don't forget to stay tuned.